Food. You know, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I went to the fridge and I opened up the meat drawer. You know what the meat drawer is, right? Yeah. What was in there? Well, I'll tell you what was in there. You know that bacon that's like maple? It's got maple flavor. The maple kind, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. I took that out and I thought, yeah. I know who would like that. Me. So I ate it. Oh, no. You kidding me? Nope. Not kidding. You know, I also noticed there was some beef in there. Yeah, you know, steak, you know, juicy. Well, I ate that too. <laughs> but I went back to the fridge just a few minutes ago and I put something together really special. You're going to love this one. I took some chicken. Yeah. I put some, yeah, I yeah. put some cheese on it. And I covered it with covered it with what I covered it with cat treats yeah. then guess what what I gave it to the cat <laughs> good morning kids welcome back to SCF kids online if you can believe it we are diving into week 27 27 it just blows my mind but I'm so glad that you've been learning and joining in each week with me so over the last number of weeks, we've been traveling through the wilderness with these grumbling Israelites. And Moses had a job of keeping these guys in line that I don't think anybody would want, but God had called him and he was doing it. So we're gonna continue in that journey today. So grab a comfy spot, keep your eyes on the screen and see what happens next. Before we jump into our story today, I thought we'd start off with a question. Are you ready? Okay, here it is. When you're faced with something that you don't understand or seems impossible, what do you do? Do you A, try to do things on your own, or B, do you freeze and ask God for his guidance? It can be difficult to stop and ask God what we should do in situations that we don't understand. It can be easier to just try and figure it out on our own. And in today's story, Balaam tries to figure it out on his own, but it would have been better for him to freeze and take God's guidance. But all this talking about freezing reminds me of a game. Do you guys want to start off with a game? I thought you might. So I've invited my daughter Adeline to help me with this game because, well, she loves to dance and I don't really love to dance. So how it's going to start is there's going to be a song that comes up on your TV or your screen that you're watching this on and I'm gonna get you to dance like crazy, okay? And Adeline's gonna be on the screen dancing along with you. But then it's going to stop or it's gonna freeze. And you need to freeze in whatever position you're in. Then the music will start again and then it's gonna freeze and on and on and on. Make sense? Okay, I'm gonna count down to three and get your dance moves ready. In three, two, one, go. Check 
The Israelites came to the edge of the Promised Land. They camped near the Jordan River in the plains of Moab. By now, all of the previous generation had died except for Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. Balak, the king of Moab, saw the Israelites and was afraid. If the Israelites moved into Moab, they could take over. King Balak sent his messengers to a man named Balaam. The king said, come and curse the Israelites so that I might be able to defeat them. The king believed that whomever Balaam cursed became cursed and whomever he blessed became blessed. When Balaam went with the king's officials, God sent an angel to stop Balaam. Balaam could not see the angel, but his donkey could. Three times the angel stood in the way and three times the donkey stopped. First, the donkey went off the road. Then she ran into a wall. Finally, she crouched down on the ground. Balaam didn't understand why the donkey was stopping. He hit the donkey with his stick, so God gave the donkey the ability to speak. What have I done to you that made you beat me three times, the donkey said. You made me look like a fool, Balaam said. God then allowed Balaam to see the angel, and Balaam said, I was wrong. I didn't know you were trying to stop me. If you don't think I should go, I'll return home right now. The angel said, it's all right for you to go, but you must only say what I tell you. When he arrived, Balaam told the king, I will only say what God tells me to say. Balaam told the king that God had blessed the Israelites, so Balaam blessed them too. In fact, he blessed them three times. The king was angry. I brought you here to curse the Israelites, but you have blessed them, he said. Go home. Before Balaam went home, he had a special message for the king. Balaam said that one day, the Lord would be born to the people of Israel. The message was a special promise. I see him, but not now. I perceive him, but not near. A star will come from Jacob, and a scepter will arise from Israel. After Balaam had said these things, he went home. Balaam could not curse God's people. God had blessed the Israelites, so Balaam blessed them too. 1400 years after Balaam announced God's promise, Jesus was born. God sent Jesus to bless the whole world by rescuing people from sin. You know, every time I hear that story, I'm surprised at Balaam's reaction to his talking donkey. Instead of saying, what? Donkeys aren't supposed to be able to talk. He carries on a conversation like it's a normal thing. Balaam was not a man who worshiped God, but this story showed that God can use anyone or anything to fulfill his plan. And in our story today, Balak wanted he was afraid, actually, of the Israelites, and he wanted to defeat them so that they would leave his kingdom. But that was not God's plan. King Balak repeatedly asked Balaam to curse the people, to curse the Israelites. But what happened each time? God commanded Balaam to bless his people, all because an angel came and spoke to his donkey. Now, what do you think about angels? Do you think that angels exist? Let's hear from Pastor Brian and see what he has to say. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. William from New York, New York asks, I heard some of my friends talking about angels the other day. Do angels really exist? Thanks for asking that question, William. It's a great question. And today in the story, we see an angel. The Bible talks quite a bit about angels as well. And so we know that they are real and they exist. Now, we have never seen an angel most likely. They are created beings that are in the spiritual world that we often don't see, but that doesn't mean they're not real. All throughout scripture, we see time and time again where God sends angels to serve a purpose. They are his servants. They usually come and deliver a message on his behalf. And sometimes we see that God sends angels to serve his people, that they come with a very specific role to take care of his people or serve them in some way. 
And so while we do not see angels normally, we know they exist. They are separate beings that God created to serve Him and serve His people. So what are some ways that you can serve God this week? Alright you guys, it's time for our memory verse game. The moment you've all been waiting for, right? And seeing as we've been talking a lot about donkeys today, I thought I'd pull this guy out and have a little bit of fun. So we're going to play a game of pin the tail on the donkey. Except this version has a bit of a twist. Instead of pin the tail on the donkey, it's going to be pin the tongue on the donkey. Because our story today, remember, we had a talking donkey. So thought we'd put a mouth on there instead. But here's how it's going to work. I'm going to put my blindfold on, got my blindfold here, and I'm going to spin myself around a few times. I'm going to try and put a tongue on top of our donkey mouth here. And there's, there's different um, sayings up here. So this one says, if you brushed your teeth this morning. So if I land on that with my tongue, not my tongue, but the paper tongue, uh, then anybody who brushed their teeth this morning is going to say the words with me. Make sense? Okay. We're going to give it a try. We'll do a few rounds and see what we land on. All right. Blindfold is going on. Oop. Just like this. Oh, I got to find my, got the tongue. All right. Here we go. I'm going to spin myself around a few times. Ah. I got a feel for the donkey here. Can we find him? Oh, yep. There he is. Okay, sorry, am I blocking you guys? Uh, well, I'll get out of the way in a second. What about right here? Okay, let's see. Oh, it says if you had cereal for breakfast, okay? So, all together, those of you that had cereal for breakfast, one, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Okay, we're going to do another one. Got tongue number two ready. See if we can actually get it on his head this time. All right, spinning round and round. This kind of hurts the knees, guys. All right, am I near the, the donkey? Oh, there he is. All right, I can kind of feel around for one of our spots. Uh, oh, right here. Is this his mouth? I can kind of feel it. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, right there. Okay, what do you think? Oh, that was more like his leg. Uh, but this one says, if you have a pet. So any of you who have a pet, we are going to say the verse together. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Okay, we got tongue number three. Blindfold up, spin around. This is getting more painful every time, kids. Woo! Okay. Uh, oh, what is this? Should we go here? No. What about here? This one? Okay. Uh, can you read it from there? It says, if you are wearing pink. So on the count of three, anybody wearing pink? One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, five and six. Okay, last but not least, we have one tongue left. What do you think? Which one do you think is gonna land on this time? And spinning, spinning, spinning. All right, here we go. Donkey, donkey. What? Oh, <laughs> the donkey's behind me? Right. Okay, guys, thanks for the help. Uh, oh, there he is. 
Found them. Found them. What about right here? Oh, where's my tape? Uh, this one. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I miss his mouth again. This one says, if you have a sister. So anybody that has a sister, say it nice and loud with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 3 5 and 6. Well, that's a wrap for our memory verse game. I'm sorry guys, I did not get it on this one, which I thought would be funny um, about brushing your teeth and anyways, uh, we didn't land there. But uh, let's continue our fun morning talking about donkeys and watch this short clip because it's good for a laugh. <laughs> We see from our Bible story today that the Israelites weren't perfect. Shocker! They disobeyed God over and over and over again. But you know what? God was gracious and merciful. The same way that he's gracious and merciful with us. We still sin today too, but God loves us. He loves us, he protects us, and he blesses us. This doesn't mean that life is always gonna be easy, but it does mean that we have great hope in the future. Hope that we can sing about. So get up on your feet and let's sing about this hope we have in Jesus. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout it. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. amen If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. amen If you're happy and you know it, two or three Amen If you're happy and you know it, two or three
surprises. Put your hands up. Yeah, I thought so. Um, but I want you to think of a specific time that you had a big surprise. Okay? Don't say it out loud. Just think about it. Got it? All right. Now point your fingers up. I want you to draw that surprise in the air. Okay? On the count of three. But I want to see if anybody else in your house can guess what your surprise is that you're drawing. Okay? In three, two, one, go. All right. Did anybody guess it? <laughs> Surprises, they can be good or they can be bad. My surprise that I drew was when I found out that I was pregnant with our baby girl, Adeline. Now, that was a great surprise. Now, shout out your answers. What were some of your surprises? Wow, those were some great surprises. Not many of you drew a bad surprise, right? But they do exist. And today in our story, Balaam had a bit of a surprise too, didn't he? He was surprised when his donkey started talking to him. Just crazy. I don't know what I would do if that was me. But God is full of surprises, and you just never know what surprise God has in store for you next. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are so good. You protected your people, and you blessed them. You also blessed us by sending Jesus to die for our sins. God, help us to show your love to others. Give us hearts to serve others humbly with joy for your glory. We love you. Amen. Thank you.